the gospel that we have just heard is a great story of a visit that Jesus made to a sinner and it ended up by completely changing his life. To understand the, the story, we want to start to know how the Jewish community would look to a tax collector. There is a, a summary of how the taxation system was used in, in the Roman Empire. It was written by a Christian scholar who lived in the 19th century. He's a very famous scholar and writer. He has very important books, one about the life and times of Jesus Christ, and the other is the temple. Some of them even they are translated into Arabic. Definitely they are available in English. His name is Alfred Edersheim. And he was describing how the taxation system of the Roman Empire was going on. He was saying that the Roman Empire, they have a census, exactly like the one which was going when Jesus was born. They have a census of all the parts under the jurisdiction of the, the, the Roman Empire. And based on the census or the population of each part, they would set a number of taxes they, should, they need to collect. And then they do like an auction or a bidding to give the right to collect that amount or at least start from that amount. So the people start to bid, I'm going to collect that number. So someone else would say, no, I'm going to collect little more. And someone would say, no, I'm going to get that right, I'm going to get more and more. And whoever will, will put the higher bid will take the right to collect the taxes. So this company or entity or, or whatever, or organization, they go and collect the taxes. And to make a profit from that, they should put even higher than the number they put into the bid. So they would ask the people to pay too much taxes. And because, why people would do that? Because they work for the Roman Empire. Because if they went and asked for a certain amount of taxes from someone, and they didn't want to pay, by the rights or by the support of the Roman Empire, they would ask the, the people to take, they take their positions. If they don't have positions to pay the taxes, they can be sold into slavery. So you can imagine how much those people were evil. They are bidding to take the right to, col to collect the taxes, and then they want to make the profit. They are using the power of the Roman Empire against their people, the Jewish people. That can tell you how much unjust and, and evil people were the tax collector and how bad they were looked to or they were seen in, in the, the Jewish community. One of them was that Zacchaeus. And he heard about Jesus Christ as everyone is, is, is hearing. I mean, what are the big names for, these, for those days? What are the names that pops up everywhere? Trump and Hillary Clinton, right? So Jesus Christ was one of the figures that, with, with all the, I'm not comparing, yeah? But I'm saying, these are the big names of the time. The breaking news is about those names. But he wanted to see him. And he wanted really to know who he is. And I think he, what he heard is not just he is doing miracles. It seems like he wanted to see someone who is different from his world. His world is the people who are taking taxes, the, the, how to take the taxes from that person, how to ask the officials of the Roman Empire to uh, inflict power on, on the people who are not uh, obedient to pay the taxes. I think that's his world. But he wanted to see something different. And because he wanted to see something different, and he went in the crowd, and he had a problem. 
he was of a short stature. So he decided to go in a, on a sycamore tree to be able to see him. Even though I don't think this was the best, uh, the best look for someone like a tax collector. Even though the tax collector were, were very seen as evil people, but they are elites. They are people who have the money. They are very wealthy. They are very wealthy. But this man, he didn't think of any of that. He wanted to see that person who is coming from a different world than his. So he wanted just to see him. And surprisingly, Jesus decided to go and visit that person. And he told him, I want to be in your house. And I want you to try to recall which houses did Jesus visit? Hmm. Houses Jesus visit? Hmm? Sinner and tax collectors. Okay, but specifically? The, the Simon the, uh, the Pharisee. One. Who else? Hmm? Qa'id al Ma'a. Even though he didn't go. The, 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 the centurion said, you don't need even to come to my house. You just say a word. But he didn't go. Hmm? Hmm? Lazarus. Maryam and Martha and Lazarus. Who else? Hmm? Uh, the house where they put the, the paralyzed from, from the ceiling. Yeah. I want to... Hmm? Peter. St. Peter when he, he healed his, his uh, mother-in-law. I'm going to take three of those. His visit to... Lazarus house Lazarus and Maryam and Martha and his visit to Simeon the Pharisee and this visit I want to do a quick comparison between those three visits Lazarus and, and Maryam and Mar Mary and Martha it was I think it seems like it was his favorite place people who are pious he, they loved him they believed in him at least to the point that if he was there Lazarus wouldn't have died even though he wanted them to believe on a higher faith or a higher belief but at least they were loving him he used to visit that place it, it's ca counted as his house so that's an easy one now we're having Simon the Pharisee and we're having the tax collector and the, the Pharisee called him to visit him. The Pharisee, Simon the Pharisee, asked him to come and, and eat with him. So he entered the house. And on his house came the, the lady, the, the, the sinner, who came and, and, and washed his feet by her tears and, and, uh, and with, with, her, with her hair. So this encounter, this visit, what change did it make in his life? Hmm. Nothing. Actually, he judged him. He said, mm, if he was a prophet, he, he wouldn't accept this woman to touch him. She is a sinner. She's known on, on our city, on our village, on our place. He asked him to visit him because he is a prominent figure on the Pharisees were prominent figures on their society so he wanted a teacher a known teacher a famous teacher to come and visit so this is a meeting of the the elites but he didn't benefit from it he didn't benefit from it actually he judged him and he was judged and now 2000 years after this incident we are recalling it, saying Simeon didn't get anything. Actually, I think he was condemned because of that visit. Because he didn't react the right reaction toward that visit. And now, we go to the third one. The visit of Zacchaeus. He didn't ask. He didn't expect. He just wanted to see him. That's it. Again, to see someone from a different world than his 
So Jesus, not just looked to him and said, Oh, you wanted to see me and you did all of that. I thank you for that. You are a good person. I, I'm, I'm so happy with you. He didn't say any of that. He said, I'm going to come and visit you. And he went to visit him. And then, totally, his life is totally, is completely changed. And we're going to discuss why the kind of change was that he gave half of what he has or what he had for to the poor and if he uh, was unjust with someone he's going to give four times we're going to discuss that later but the point i want to make now that this visit was a reason for a complete change it's an encounter that made Zacchaeus a different person and by the way there is a tradition, we don't know a lot about Zacchaeus and what happened later on, but we know that he followed Jesus Christ and then he became a bishop of Caesarea later on. We don't know more a lot about him, but I mean it was a major change, a radical change in his life because of that encounter. Why are we saying that? Because each time we come to church, it should be, it hopefully be, an encounter with, with our Lord. And that encounter should leave a change in our lives. It shouldn't be, not every time we're going to change a radical change, but we should change. I mean, the radical change that happened in Zacchaeus' life, it, it, I think, if we, we're going to spe speculate how he acted later on, I think he Maybe he, he struggled against the, the lust of collecting money. Maybe he feels that, yeah, he was owning more than what he had, has now. I think he went through all that struggles. But I think at the end, he was sticking to follow Jesus Christ. And he was always trying to be the disciple Jesus Christ wants, wants him to be. So. I, what we want to get from that, there is a radical change that happened to him, which we also are asking that each time again we come to church, each time we pray, we want it to be an encounter with Jesus Christ that make a change in our life. The last point, how this change was seen according to the Bible. So it was said, then the case stood and stood and said to the Lord, look Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. So he took two actions. Took two actions. One, he decided to give half of what you have to the poor. Two, if he took anything by false accusation, he will give fourfold instead. Why these two changes? And why? That's what he decided to do when he had Jesus in his home or in his house. And he, did, he didn't say, I'm going to bring you fragrant oil, like the, the, the sinner, the woman who was, who was a sinner. He, he didn't do something different. He decided to give to the poor. And if he, was, if he had taken anything by false accusation, he would give up fourfold. Why these two actions? I think one, when someone is, is living in sin, he's only looking to himself. And one of the ways that reflect that someone is changing is his thinking for, of others. Not just, not just the poor. If I care for others, if I started to get out of myself, of my self-centeredness, I think that's when we can say that we are changing. This can be a move toward change or transformation, and it can be a measure by which you can measure if there is a change on your life or not, if you are giving. And giving is not writing a check, the easiest thing to write a check. It helps the taxes. <laughs> but uh, to, feel, to feel the pains of others, to feel their feeling, to share with them, 
to consider them important people in your life. You need them and they need you. I think that's the kind of change. To have compassion. Because sin is always, as I mentioned before, it is doing like scaling, it's it hardening the heart. And I told you before, I can't remember when, but uh, hardening of the heart is the, the, the Greek word for the hardening of the heart is the same word used in, in medicine and the medical field, sclerosis. What sclerosis is? Hmm? Tasallub huh? al right? When the, the veins or arteries are, are, are hardened and they don't function. And if they are 100% uh, hardened, the, the, the person, whether uh, he should do an open heart surgery or he's going to die. So that's the, the hardening. So if the, the heart is hardened, I look to myself. But when the heart starts to change, I have compassion. The heart starts to have compassion on others. So he decided to give half of his goods to the poor. Two. He started to self-examine himself and he said, I think he made a quick list. Okay, this person, I shouldn't have taken from him that much. I took him $1,000 more. I'm going to pay for this $4,000. And then he started to go through the list of the people he took money from them with false accusation and he decided to change. That's another aspect of repentance and change. I should examine myself and to be able to say, yes, I am wrong. I was wrong. And whichever I did, I should reverse. I should pay back. If I'm in disagreement or in hatred with someone, I'm going to show some action of love. If I'm, a, uh, I'm hating someone or I'm, I'm, I'm in a bad relationship, in a wrong relationship, I should think of cutting it off. If I'm uh, envying someone, I'm going to start to see what I have and, and, and praise God and, and thank Him for what I have. And so forth. Everyone which, who encounters God, he should self-examine himself. As the, the, the Catholic epistle, the reading from the Catholic epistle today was about that the holiness. Be holy because your Lord is holy. When we see ourselves in the light of God, we start to realize how much sinners we are and how much holy we should be and we need to be. The good news that we rest upon the grace of God which can make that change. But hopefully we don't go out from this church today with no change. Jesus is, is in our midst and if we are really encountering him there should be a change in our lives. And by the way, this, is, this reading of the, the story of Zacchaeus, it is read in when we, uh, with the unction of the sick. It is the second gospel of the unction of the sick. And it is on the blessing of, of any new house. The blessing of any house, we read that gospel. And why this, this, this passage was read on these two occasions? Because we pray that when we pray on a new house or we, the unction of the sick in one of the houses of the believers, we hope that this kind of change is happening. This kind of change. So we should pray and we ask, as Zacchaeus has changed when he encountered the, the Jesus and, and who came to his house, Jesus is willing, God is willing to come and to have a house. St. John Chrysostom, I'm going to conclude, I make it too long, I know. Uh, but St. John Chrysostom said a very nice thing. He said that Jesus want, w went to visit Zacchaeus not because of his house was fancy, but he, it was ready. His heart, not his house, his heart was ready to, to receive Jesus Christ. And that's why he went to him. He didn't, he didn't go to the fancy house. But he went to the house where there, there was people, their heart were, was ready, or their heart were ready to receive him. 
and that's why he, he went and responded. And because the, the hearts were ready, a change, a radical change has happened. May God give us to, to change our lives through His grace and glory be to God forever. Oh, <laughs>